Hi everyone, welcome to Spring Boot Essentials by Dev Dojo. So before we go deeper into Spring Boot, let's try to understand how things work behind the scenes. And for that, I'm going to use IntelliJ and we are going to create a simple Java project. So just click on create a new project. I'm going to use Java 11, Java version 106. This is the latest L2S version. Then click on next, click on next again. Just define the project name and the project location. I'm going to name this project Spring Boot 2 Essentials. Click on Finish, create the directory if it does not exist, and then click OK. Just wait a little bit until the project loads. And now we are going to right click over Spring Boot Essentials and let's make this a Maven project by clicking on Add framework support up here and then just scroll down all the way to Maven. You will see that uh, the folder structure changed a little bit and then we have here a POM file and we have to start giving a name for the group ID. Let's just give this name as uh, academy.devdojo lowercase and press enter, the name of the artifact ID will be this one, version snapshot, press enter. Now at the bottom right, just click on enable auto import. And then you can minimize this Maven screen. So let's add a parent here. This parent will be arc.spring. Actually, it's not like this, you have parent and then you have group ID. Spring org dot spring framework. Let's add this one spring framework dot boot and spring dash boot dash start dash parent. The first one right here. And the version I'm going to use 2.2.6 release. This is the latest version at the moment I'm recording this video. Okay, we have the parent and let's add one tiny dependency. Just added the dependencies tag and then one dependency here and this dependency will be spring dash boot dash starter and search for starter web. Wait until the IG finishes indexing everything. And now we have our POM file ready. So let's understand what we have here at this POM file. The parent it's created by Spring Boot and these dependencies, as you can see here, we don't have any specific version for it. So this is one of the things that uh, Spring Boot is going to do for you. The first purpose, in my opinion, for uh, Spring Boot is to allow you a uh, simple configuration. So basically they try to avoid you to have uh, several XML files uh, configuring the, the entire project. And with this, one of the things that you have to do is just add the dependency and you don't have to worry about the versions. Now, what dependencies are actually behind the scenes. If you click here and uh, you go into the project detail, just right click and you go into module settings and then you click over libraries. So these are the libraries that Spring Boot is bringing to you just by using Spring Boot Starter Parent and Spring Boot Starter Web. So as you can see here, we have several dependencies that are needed if you are going to work with web applications. So for example, we have for the mapping between JSON and Java classes, we have the Jackson binding. We have uh, for logging, log back and SLF4j. Spring Boot will run embedded several containers. By default, it will be Tomcat, but you have uh, another two options that is Jetty or Undertow. And we have several other um, libraries coming uh, with the specific versions for you. If you want more details, you can right click and go into Maven and show effective POM. So the starters, they are handling this version for you. So this is one of the benefits of using uh, starters from Spring is that you don't have to worry about compatibility. Spring it, uh, already did that for you. So this is just the dependencies that we need to make uh, a microservice that will run our small web application. 
now let's go into main and here at the java package let's create java uh some packages inside java let's call this spring boot 2 and now we are going to create some classes inside this uh this package so the first one uh, we always need a domain class let's create a package called domain and inside uh, this domain package let's create a new class and this class let's call it anime so we have here uh, anime class let's add uh, one attribute let's call this private string name and let's add a constructor and a default constructor without any parameters I'm not going to add the uh, getters and starters because I would like you to to see the, the problem when you don't add getters and setters to your class. Okay, now we have the our domain class called anime and uh, let's create another class and let's call this class. Uh, actually, let's create a new package inside the, under the Spring Boot 2. Let's call this uh, start. And let's create a new class. Let's call this class uh, application start. Okay application start is the class that's going to run this application so when we just create a class like this we don't have anything yet we just need to add a public static void main method and inside this we just call a spring uh, application oh sorry spring not string spring application dot run and we just need to send this application start class and then the args okay so here comes with uh, the spring configuration the first configuration that we have to do is tell spring to enable all the configurations by using this annotation enable auto configuration so enable auto configuration will do several things behind the scenes you can check uh, the spring documentation to see exactly what's going to do but you can see here that by adding this at enable auto configuration we have this small icon right here so this is the intellij automated version that's why we can see this and if we remove this is going away so this means that this is a spring component so this spring component uh, will be loaded at the time that we are starting the application so we have our class domain we have our class start that's going to run the application but we still don't have uh, our endpoints so let's create a new uh, java class actually a new package and let's call this package controller and inside controller let's create a new class and let's call this um, anime controller so this anime controller it's just a simple class that will act as our endpoints exposure and we have here one annotation that we need to use for spring rest controller so if you are already familiar with spring um, probably it's spring mvc you probably remember that we have at controller what's the difference between at controller and at rest controller this is just that the at controller it's um Wow, oh, it's used uh, by the Spring MVC, and when we were using at controller, we were able to pass views between the the back end and the technically the front end. And at REST controller, if you go inside, you will see that we have this annotation at response body. In simple terms, at response body, you are telling that the response of your endpoints, and this is going to be added to the all the endpoints you have inside that class is going to return like a simple string. So it means that you cannot send the views like you used to with uh, Spring uh, MVC. So this is what we are going to do. We could use controller, then we would need to annotate all the endpoints with at uh, response body. So we have here at rest controller. And when we have at rest controller, we just need to create the controllers. So, sorry, the endpoints. So the first endpoint that we are going to create is one that will return a list of animes so let's go list uh, anime and here let's import let's call this list all the name doesn't matter what matters is the endpoint that you are going to assign to this method so just return 
as list. So this is arrays.as list and new anime. Let's start with one anime simple, everybody knows, and another one that has a lot of friendship and romance. Berserk. So we have these two, and we have to be able to tell, hey, um, everybody accessing this endpoint should go to this method if they are trying to list all. But we don't know how to get to this endpoint yet. Just by using at rest controller, we are just telling that this will be a rest controller, but we don't have anything here that will tell, hey, this rest controller should be accessed using this URL. When we have this problem, we solve by adding at request mapping and at request mapping we just give one small name here and we have now the endpoint enemy so if someone access localhost the port that the service is running slash anime it means that it's coming to this class and now from this class we need to go into this endpoint we want to list everything so we have several options the old way, and you will probably see some in some places, we have this at request mapping. And at request mapping will tell what kind of method you are going to return to access this uh, endpoint. So it means that someone executed request. This is the get. And here, if you want, you can give a path and say, hey, I want this endpoint to be represented by the list. It means that if someone is trying to access, they will need to access localhost. Let's imagine that this is running on port 8080. And then slash the context of the service. By default, it will run uh, the root level. So we don't need to give the name Spring Boot to Essentials. So we just give this will be anime and then list. And when we access this by anime, uh, Spring is going to forward that request to this controller and then list it's going to execute this endpoint. So this is the old way of doing this um, at request mapping. You can see that there is a warning because I have Sonar linked here and it's telling to replace request mapping get by get mapping. So this is the new way of doing it. So get mapping and we still keep the path and we fix all the annotations and we remove this guy. Okay, so we have here one controller that is a REST controller. The request mapping for this entire controller is anime, so all the endpoints we start with anime. And then we have here a slash list. If we don't send anything, by default, when you execute a get for a slash anime, it will execute this method. This means that you can only have one get with no path. But let's uh, leave list here. And let's start our application. So just go into your application and um, you can run it here or just clicking here on run. Okay, so the application, it's uh, it started we have here Tomcat running on port 8080. So let's go into localhost 8080. So localhost 8080 slash anime slash list. And we have our first 404. So when you have 404, it can be several things. For example, then the point does not exist, but in our case, it's something a little bit different. Can you see here that this is um, a spring component? But if we go into our controller, we don't have this uh, icon right here. It means that this is not a Spring Bean. We know that it's a Spring Bean because of the REST controller. Inside REST controller, you have Add Controller. And inside a Controller, if you keep going uh, that way, you have the component. And component, it's going to tell this is a Spring Bean. Now, this is not being uh, consider a spring bin because we didn't tell spring that uh, it should look inside this package so what we are going to do inside start we are going to add here one annotation called component scan and we are going to tell hey 
please look inside the package um, academy dot dev dojo dot spring boot two dot controller let me copy this so by doing this we are telling spring to start looking into that package and now if we go here you can see that this is a spring bin so this means that now we will be able to execute the that call and we will see something so let's restart our application and let's execute again and we get one error 500 so this 500 means that you have internal server error it's a problem in our code that we have to fix so as you can see here no serializer uh, for, was found for the this class anime it's a bit uh, difficult sometimes to understand these kind of errors but this happens when you don't have like your getters and setters because spring will automatically try to map the values that you have through get and set so just uh, make sure that you follow the java convention for that now let's uh, reboot the application again and now let's refresh here and we have the json response so you can see the raw data the headers and the json so as you can see it's just a uh, application json just a string and this is done because we are using here the request mapping request um, the rest controller and response body so this is the most uh, simple way to create a, a spring application without using the spring initializer or uh, for the website or for the IntelliJ so why I did this because I would like you to understand what's happening behind the scenes so once you know how things happens behind the scene it makes easier for you to debug your own code so in the next video we are going to use what we are probably going to use from now on in our daily lives so i hope you enjoyed see you in the next video bye <laughs>